Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the uh, morning debrief. It's the second of February, uh, the fourth of February. The current time is eight thirteen. The Dow's been closed for thirteen points, relatively positive. Um, and uh, we had an interesting night there, I think, particularly for uh, gold, which had a very strong move, up close to twenty bucks to about thirteen fifty six. So, uh, uh, quite happy to see that move actually occur, because as been a recommendation we have been putting out to clients over the last uh, couple of days. Okay, um, let's have a quick uh, wrap as to uh, what's occurred. So let's just run through that now. Okay, just a quick wrap there. And as you can see, uh, the Dow closed up 26 points, and uh, that's at uh, 12,068. Uh, the S&P was up three, the NASDAQ was up five. Uh, moving across over to, um, let's just move that out of the way. Uh, moving across uh, the Euro, the stock, uh, top 50 was down 17. The FTSE was down 16 and the CAC was down 29. The DAX was up 10. The local market closed uh, up um, just up a fraction there, which was about 12 points, 4,795. Really seem to see that market break through 48.30. And if we do see that, then hopefully there will be the chance of a good trend to, uh, to commence the top side. So uh, quite strong, uh, hopefully. But uh, it is Friday. And as we know, uh, what uh, most occurs on Friday uh, is that uh, we actually get a bit of a sell-off. And uh, that's certainly been the, the trend over the last couple of days, a uh, couple of weeks and months, actually. Anyway, uh, let's have a look here at uh, some of the markets. And uh, there's a bit of a chart there. There's the spies you can see there. A lot of resistance up here and uh, a lot of resistance, um, as you can see. The question is that we all feel that it's, it is in a range. The, the question is whether or not it's going to break out and when will it break out. Um, obviously, the top end, uh, we need to see a break of this high here, which I think is very important. Uh, that high there, I think, will give us that uh, that uh, confirmation. Daily close above there could actually propel the market through to that 4,900, maybe 5,000, because it has spent a lot of time uh, just consolidating. So a good healthy break there. Um, we are certainly looking forward to when, in fact, it does happen. Um, but it is Friday, so uh, let's see what happens. Obviously, concerns um, over what's happened with the cyclone will it affect the earnings of a lot of people, a lot of companies, and um, as a result of that, you might see continual pressure. Okay, let's have a look at the dollar index. That's obviously a key, 77.87 US dollars, stronger than expected. Uh, last night we did see on the back of what was happening in Egypt, the flight to um, dollars and gold. And uh, as you can see, that uh, dollar index, 77.87. Uh, the low we actually saw, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the low we actually saw, I have seen, the 77.87, or on 77, sorry, 10. The fact that we're bounced out, I think, is quite encouraging. So uh, if anything there, um, probably expect that dollar to remain a little bit better bid. Um, on the back of that, um, obviously a stronger dollar, stronger gold price. And uh, there you can see there uh, that 13.53, 13.56 is where the market is. And it actually feels like a solid move there that uh, we should actually start to test that top end. Um, well, that's what we're actually looking for and uh, we are, have been long for some time. Okay, on the crude market, 90.60. Uh, breakthrough 90.20 I think is a concern to the downside. Um, one thing which is worth mentioning, uh, one thing that is m worth mentioning, that um, if the Egyptian crisis solves itself very quickly, that could suggest that other nations in the region who wish to overturn their leaders will do the same thing. That in itself could uh, provide us uh, with more instability. So I just want to make sure that that's, uh, everyone's pretty clear on that because that's what could occur. Um, so, but, uh, but if that's the case, then uh, that will have implications to oil. So I think the, the, the correct result there is for uh, things to pan out a little bit longer. Uh, but let's just see we don't get that civil unrest. Okay, so the, that's crude, obviously in a range. Uh, top side, 92, uh, 92.20 uh, needs to be broken. Then the other major resistance is, is sorry, 92.20 is the resistance um, and 92.50. So if we break through that area on a daily chart, you can actually see that um, we'll probably sit to a new and higher trend. There's that resistance up the top there. You can see it. We're just on it. Momentum suggests it, but if we break through it, then uh, things will look okay. Okay, just have a look at the Aussie. Aussie 1.01480, top end of the range, looking a, bit, a, bit, a little bit better bid. Um, you know, it is holding this quite nicely, this top side, um, and there is a call for it to test 1.02 again. So let's see how that unfolds. Having a look at, uh, obviously, with that strength in that dollar, we have seen a little bit of um, tough profit-taking in our softs. So you're aware we did take off the wheat trade, 
uh, just locked in a little bit of profit there, but we're still on corn and soya. In fact, we actually did try and get out of that uh, corn last night as well, uh, but just didn't reach our levels. Uh, but if anything there, probably a little bit of a correction there um, due to the strength of the US dollar pending. Okay, um, so we mentioned the Aussie, we've mentioned um, copper, uh, sorry, crude, we mentioned gold, uh, coppers, litmus test I think is key, but I think more importantly, tonight we're going to be focused on what's going to happen with the US in terms of the data. Uh, we do have um, average hourly earnings, um, we have the um, average weekly hours, all expected to be relatively steady. We've got um, private payrolls, non-farm payrolls, manufacturing payrolls, all expected to show growth. Uh, that puts the unemployment rate there at 9.5%, although a little bit worse than the previous, but we are looking for these numbers to show growth. Um, if we don't see this growth, then I think it's more of a concern, uh, purely because we've spent so much time and effort, or Bernanke has, in making the QE2 packages uh, stretch uh, over time. Remember the package is there for six months. So you'd expect to see these numbers start to improve, given the fact that we're priming the economy every month um, with, um, with quantitative easing. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be the key and also the litmus uh, for us for the next couple of weeks as to how we treat the economy. The numbers in the States have been good. The reason they've been good, I feel, is because of the stimulus and we just want this stimulus to uh, take hold. Anyway, that comes out tonight, so pretty, pretty close to that um, as to um, what the Dow will do. Uh, let's have a quick look at the Dow uh, on a chart and see if we can glean anything from it. Um, <clears throat> as you can see by the chart, um, it's it's just on tender hooks. It just keeps on slowly grinding higher. That's what makes a trend, I guess, just this slow upward grind. Um, we are following these trend lines. Keep an eye on those trend lines. Um, I think the a break of 11,700 uh, is going to be uh, a bit of a shift for us, and uh, that will certainly put the cat amongst the pigeons. Uh, but uh, at the moment, this is a trial and trusted trend, so we're just going to keep close to that. Anyway, that comes out tonight. Let's see uh, what how that unfolds. Well, that's about uh, it from me today. I um, hope everyone has a good day. Uh, happy trading. It's going to be a challenge tonight, so you can stay pretty close to it. I don't expect too much to happen in the lead up to it, unless, of course, something spikes itself out of Egypt, um, which is obviously one of the hotspots we're focused on. So happy trading, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.